Hi, this is Keith Bryant for Global SMT and Packaging at Productronica India, and I'm on the PCI stand with Andy Nesbitt from Gen3. Um, we're going to talk about rows and a whole load of other interesting stuff. So, welcome, Andy. Thank you. Right. Let's, let's do the first one, the elephant in the room for a lot of people. Rose testing. Some people believe it's alive. IPC say it's dead. Uh, you guys are yeah. the experts, so tell us the real truth. It's not just IPC, yeah, it's everyone. So, so Rose has been removed from standards, has been for a little while now. And really the, the question is, what do we do next? So uh, that is where objective evidence is now being required by standards. And Rose always had this baseline number of 1.56 micrograms of sodium chloride. And it was an industry-wide number that everyone used. Uh, it was implemented in the 1970s by the US Navy. And of course, electronics has changed slightly since the 1970s. So what do you do? Objective evidence is now required, which means that companies building boards uh, now need to characterize the material set, qualify their manufacturing process to prove that what they're making is uh, going to be working and reliable. OK, and what equipment do they use to test it? So that is where SIR testing is becoming more prevalent. And SIR testing is, of course, service insulation resistance testing, and we're measuring resistance. It's the best way of showcasing whether your material set has any issues uh, throughout your assembly process. So with SIR testing, it's a standard 168 hour test, 85-85 uh, temperature and humidity. That would give you a coupon if it passes. That would give you a coupon which you know is good because your material sets have passed the test. Once you have that good coupon, you can then place that into an ionic contamination tester and that will give you a new number. So where 1.56 was industry-wide, this new number after SIR testing could be one, it could be three, it could be eight. It doesn't matter because it's dedicated to your own manufacturing process and you've proven and you have the data to back it up that what you're building is reliable. Okay, so effectively you're not qualifying a, a board or an assembly, you're qualifying a process. Quite, it's a process yeah. control tool. And yeah. that's what ionic contamination testing is all about. It's a process control tool, yeah. not necessarily a cleanliness test. Tool. Yeah, so you don't have to test everything or one in 10 or anything like that. Just test the process when you set up a process, when you change materials. Uh, of course, any and, process, yeah. yeah. You, you can start off with uh, a test like once every once every day, then it could move to once every week, once every you know, once every two weeks, once every month, and so on and so forth, because your process will be very much in motion by then. It'll yeah. be very, very good by then. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, re yeah. the testing would, would reduce. And, and as long as you don't change materials, cleaning materials, yeah. and that sort of stuff, if then... If one thing changes, you have to requalify again, yeah. because it might interact differently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And obviously, there, there was a logical reason for discontinuing what people were doing. Um, and you, you have now a, a let, let's let's call it the, uh, the the better system to to run with everything. And how's it how's it going in terms of adoption? Yeah, so we we have got a, a, a quite large increase in terms of orders that we're getting, and, and of course, you know the market is is huge when it comes to who builds or uh, electronics and where the world's going as well with the demand on EV applications. Uh, and of course, everything becoming electrified, there's a huge, huge uh, demand. And so, again, you know, having a test that was developed in the 1970s, um, showcasing reliability for today's electronics with much smaller packaging. I mean, I don't need to explain what's different yeah. from the 1970s. Uh, and that's where we've also developed uh, this website to help explain objective evidence. So www.objectiveevidence.org has all of the information about the history of it, and also what's required to move it forward. Oh, that sounds like a really useful tool for people then. I think so. And while we talk about useful tools, we have to talk about uh, these two books. Let's do a hop for the camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, produced by your your father, the creator of uh, Gen 3. Yes, and uh, Well, my Doc, granddad was the creator. No, sorry, Doc, your granddad was, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Dr. Chris Hunt, who is probably known for reliability throughout the world for many years. So yes, tell us absolutely. more about them. Well, obviously these are hard copies, so tell us where people can absolutely. get it electronically. So, uh, we can absolutely, we, what we've done is develop two books all about process control and process validation. 
it covers the whole topic of objective evidence, uh, process ionic contamination, SIR, uh, CAF testing as well. And of course, what we're looking for is electrochemical migration. That's the key fundamental. So these books have been written uh, to help establish exactly the history of it and what is required and, uh, and in the future. So they go into great detail, uh, but they're, they, you know, they're very interesting for this one that we're in. And these are downloadable at iConnect007 uh, uh, for their books. And uh, yeah, so go onto the iConnect007 books website and you'll be able to download uh, process validation and process control books. Very, very useful books ah, for, so for the, understanding this topic. Yeah, and this, these will quickly be becoming the Bible for people to use to do everything that yeah, needs like, to be done within the... Process uh, Control is the book that we released in March this year, so that's yep. our newest one. Uh, we've had over 500 downloads of that in, in a few months. Process Validation we released a couple of years ago, we've had over 3,000 downloads for that. Okay. And so it's, you know, it's, right. it's a very hot topic. We even had it translated in Chinese as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Because I know China is one of your bigger markets. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's that kind of also is a an indicator of how our electronics manufacturing world is changing. You know, when when China becomes the the biggest user of uh, process validation and process control mm. testing yeah. equipment, then you know it it speaks a lot to people like me who've been in the industry for a long time. <laughs> well, and that's where you know the world is going. And that's what is so exciting about the potential of everything. And it's, yep. of course, what brings me to India yep. uh, to support our distributors, PCI, because the India market is growing significantly as well with all of this. So there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of potential business coming. Which is and, good. and thank you. You've just covered my last question without me having to ask it. So thanks for your time, Andy. Lovely. It's always good to see you different you. places around the world. Thank and you, uh, I hope people now understand uh, a little bit more about uh, why the... But what, why the roses are dead and what has to be done to uh, qualify a good board, especially in automotive and military and aerospace applications. So thank you for your time. Sir. Thank you.